Good evening, everyone. I am your host and instructor, Lainey Shaughnessy, and welcome to Spindle TV, your best source for CNC CAD CAM training videos. Spindle TV is brought to you by Digital Woodcarver, inspiring your creativity and providing you with the tools to create your own unique masterpieces. Hello, hello, and welcome to another Spindle TV class. I want to thank you all for joining me tonight. My name is Lainey Shaughnessy, and uh, welcome, Bob. Good to see you in here. We're going to wait a few minutes and give everybody a chance to um, get uh, settled in and uh, join us. So, hope you're doing well. Either that or it's going to be me and you, Bob, all night. <laughs> all right, we'll get... Uh... We'll get everybody set up here in a moment. Welcome, David. Welcome, Baron. <laughs> Bob, you asked Vetrick about making the toolpath window larger. Do I know how? The toolpath window. Um, are you talking about the 3D view or the actual toolpath tab window on the right side of the screen? Let me know, Bob, which one you're referring to. So they, uh, Really, Bob, there's there's no way to uh, to do that. There's no way to adjust the uh, toolpath window size on the right hand side of the screen. Now, the the you know, of course, you want to transfer over to that toolpath side um, using the appropriate tab, so it shuts down the drawing side and pushes everything to the right. Um, but that bar, that window, that toolpath window on the right side of the screen, there's no way to adjust the frame size of it. Um, and uh, like in some programs and some things, you can um, grab the corner edge uh, with your mouse and kind of pull it over and things. Uh, unfortunately, there's, that, that option doesn't... Uh, it's a fixed window width, if that makes any sense. Um, it's a fixed window width. Hey, Ronald, how are y'all doing? All right. All 
You asked them if they could default it to the other side uh, and have the cat and the cam on the same side. That would be a little, I think that would be more confusing uh, to users, Bob. Um, I believe that uh, having it on two separate sides of the software, CAD and CAM, uh, keeps that defining line between the two operations you're designing and you're manufacturing. Uh, it's uh, by design, uh, you know, it's an optimal layout, but, you know, uh, we'll see what they say. See what they say. All right, so tonight we are going to uh, be exploring um, the job setup, uh, your job setup, and um, how to get the most out of your 3D models uh, resolution, out of the actual carving, uh, and how your job setup uh, affects the, um, the outcome of your modeling resolution and things uh, when you carve it. Um, we're going to look at uh, different ways to we're going to look at different ways the um, the modeling resolution uh, in our preview window uh, actually uh, in the pixel eight pixels in that modeling window how it actually affects the actual outcome of the model uh, and its carving and things so uh, I believe everybody is uh, coming in and stuff and so we're going to go ahead and get started uh, so let's uh, let's jump right on over to our Vetric and let's uh, talk about this. Okay, so here we are in the uh, Vetric. I'm in Vetric Pro and I, I will be definitely, uh, we're going to be switching over to the Vetric Aspire here in just a moment too to talk about uh, how this affects when you're creating your models, the things you can do and stuff. But let's talk about um, our job setup. Now, of course, right now I'm in my main window. Basically, I've already gone past the job setup window here and what we, whether you're doing training with me and stuff, uh, you know, like when you did your initial training with me, uh, you may have heard me talk about the modeling resolution down here and the standard very high and high view. And I always recommended the uh, very high resolution because it gives us about a 98% representation of what our project looks like and all. You probably heard me say that, uh, you know, many times before and stuff. Well, it does uh, much more than that when it comes to 3D modeling. The When we set up a job right from the get-go, uh, based on the resolution based on the resolution of what we have our job set at, uh, whether we're using the standard high or very high option, uh, that is going to ultimately determine our uh, quality of our 3D models uh, when we bring them into our software. And that, that resolution, uh, those models can only be built uh, based on the pixels uh, of that resolution and the quality will not um, be any more improved uh, than what that quality is. So um, the resolution, number one, it sets the number of points uh, that the model is based on. Uh, and understand. let's understand something right off the get-go we are talking about 3d models it has no effect the resolution has no effect on your 2d vectors you know that your you know your profile cuts pocket cuts and, and things like that you know based on your vectors it's really going to be your vector uh, whether it be a picture tracing or what have you uh, that's going to you know the quality of that tracing or the quality of that vector is is basically going to be uh, you know it's going to determine the quality of that particular carving but when it comes to 3d models 
Um, we're working with, uh, like if we were, if we started up our job and we just left it defaulted to the standard, which is the fastest, you know, uh, generating 3d preview and all and, and, and everything, then we're dealing with about a million points, a million pixels, uh, of, uh, quality in that 3d view. And so our model, uh, is going to be based off of that. Uh, higher settings means uh, better quality and also you know the give and take of it all it also means uh, longer calculating times when it's calculating the toolpath but you need to understand that the toolpath is being calculated off the model that is generated in that 3d view so if our model has pixelations, those pixelations and things are going to be calculated in our toolpath and therefore our cut quality is going to be representative of that, represent that. Um, we need to, right from the start of setting up our job in our job setup here, we need to um, balance how we choose uh, our options uh, basically it's going to be based on you know what suits us and what suits our job and everything that we're doing uh, it, it's you know it suits the the hardware that we're working with not only in the computer but with our machine um, the uh, things that uh, you may not be aware of if I were to come up to uh, the tool pass up here and look at the preview simulation quality, notice we have standard high, very high, extremely high, and maximum, right? We have these options. Well, down here in the modeling resolution in the job setup, I have standard, high, and very high. Well, you may or may not have known that we can access more um options in this window if we come in from the very start if i close this if i come in from the very start here uh, before i create a new file if i hold my shift key before i click create a new file now in my modeling resolution you will see that we have two additional options extremely high and maximum quality okay so now these two options uh, the extremely high is working with over 8 million pixels to generate this 3d model and then of course the maximum is over 16 million pixels and it's 50 times slower to generate that preview uh, you know, when you're previewing your toolpath simulation quality. And uh, therefore, you know, uh, but uh, that model quality that's going to be built on those 50 million pixels is going to be, is, you know, it's going to be phenomenal. It's highest points that it can be. Now, your standard user, you guys, even myself, uh, typically we're going to be within the standard high or very high option and that's why i always kind of recommend very high because not only in the preview does it give us a 98 percent representation but um little do we know that uh it it actually um affects the quality of our 3d model rendering uh and ultimately affecting the result of the 3d model cut the final result when we cut it and everything now very very rarely um uh, are you going to use the extremely high or the maximum? These would be um, circumstances where uh, you have a model with a lot of detail and you want the best quality of that detail uh, to come out in your carving and things. Then we are going to render or create that model using one of these two options the extremely high or the maximum but it's very rare uh, that we need to go uh, to that extreme uh, the very high setting 
uh, with over 4 million pixels is uh, quite a lot of points for that model to be created on. Okay, and uh, but uh, I wanted you to uh, know how to access access these two options. And once again, um, if we start from the beginning here, you simply hold your shift key down when you click create new file. And that will give you those two additional options. Okay. So uh, you want to uh, uh, be aware of that. And so let's look at uh, some um, uh, comparisons and things. Uh, if we go into uh, just, I'm not holding my shift key, just uh, create a new file. Uh, I'm going to use a standard view here and I'm going to click OK. And I'm going to go into my clip art. And in the uh, clip art, uh, let's go ahead and grab a model. Let's see here. Let's see here. What would be a good one to uh, represent? Represent. Let's use a tropical fish. I've never used a tropical fish before. Okay. Um, <clears throat> all right. Let's maximize this out a bit. All right, let's take a look at this in our 3D view, okay? Um, let's tilt it to the side and everything. And I really wanna focus on the edges here and everything uh, around, especially around the edges and around the mouth and the pixelations and stuff, uh, you know, uh, in the gills and all. Now, we have uh, just built this model um, based on our job setup. And so the, again, the, our setup standard setup that we're using is what the model is based on. It's based on that setup. And there is, um, excuse me, I got the hiccups. You have to forgive me. Oh my goodness. Um, there is, oh, what am I trying to say here? The um, model, the component, um, is, even if we baked it, uh, even if we, um, you know, uh, changed our resolution after the fact and things, uh, it internally it's going to maintain the quality and the resolution that it was initially created with. So it's never going to get any better than this. We could add smoothing to it and things like that to attempt to improve it, but internally uh, it's never going to improve beyond this resolution here. So we it's it's all about the job setup and where we start and even if we uh as you'll see here you know in uh aspire um even if we took a, a model an stl model that we purchased um that we've uh, you know brought in and maybe uh maybe it's a model that we've created in an Aspire and we've exported it out as an STL and it was imported into a project that was uh, set to a very high resolution, whatever that model was, the, the resolution, the quality that that model was created, initially created with, it's always going to maintain that resolution. Even if I brought this model into another model that had that was developed or created with a higher resolution this fish is never going to get any better it's not going to improve the quality it's never going to get any better than this uh this pixelation and everything okay so um you and you can you can't there's just no improving it uh now we're going to uh take this fish and uh we're going to delete it and we're going to close this. 
uh, program. And we're going to come in and set our modeling resolution to very high. We're going to just jump right to the highest point of the three options that we have. And we're going to go in and uh, bring in that tropical fish. Now we're working with over 4 million points, 4 million pixels and things uh, that we are um, working with. And the quality of our preview as we as we come in um, the quality around oops too far the quality around the mouth uh, is and uh, the body I, I, I wish I was a way to be able to do a screen by screen side by side screen of the two options and all but even our edge detail we have a much uh, clearer quality uh, within the um, uh, the fish, the, the model itself. It was built on uh, 4 million pixels now. And um, so it's when, when, we, when we carve this, when we create our tool pass and things, we're going to now be able to uh, build a, uh, you know, have a much better result in the end. And again, uh, this really comes into play when we have, uh, you know, models with, with a lot of detail. And there's a lot of details in this particular tropical fish, the scales and everything. And, and it's a much clearer quality resolution. I can, you know, you can tell around the eyes uh, and, and everything uh, that the, with the more pixel counts that then each pixel has its own height and so this model is built up on these pixels and the reason why it uses uh, pixels um, is uh, you know to generate these models and things is because uh, it's easier uh, for blending and stuff and you'll see that when we actually build models uh, when we move over to the Aspire software now let's uh, let's take it to one of the extremes let's go ahead and once again uh, delete this out of here and um, let's close this program and now i'm going to hold my shift key down <clears throat> i'm going to hold my shift key down when i click create new file so that i have uh, these additional options and uh, i'm going to uh, jump right over to the maximum 16 million pixels uh, and um, now we have the ultimate in resolution quality, and, but we are dealing with something that's going to take 50 times longer to generate that 3D model preview, that toolpath preview. Uh, and um, you know, it's, it would seem like, oh man, we're waiting forever just to see the preview. However, that little bit of sacrifice of time is going to improve the quality, you know, extremely. So now. We're going to uh, drop this uh, fish in, and I'm going to uh, scale up my uh, fish and everything, and let it regenerate. Okay, let's kind of move this over to the side. Let it regenerate as I'm moving around. You'll see it pixelate until it regenerates itself, and. Um, Let's zoom in here. And now uh, we are dealing with over 50 million pixels to generate this model. And, um, and you can take a look at this for yourself in your programs and things and just look. But uh, significant difference in the, even the edge detail uh, around the mouth and the eyes uh, and, and along the scales and the tail. Um, a very high uh, quality and that smoothness and stuff and all we can we can take it a step further and we can smooth it out even more um, now again we would very rarely would we as typical users uh, go into the extremely high or maximum height and all but um, this model now that it's you know generated in this uh, uh, high of quality if I was building a model if I had a spire 
and I was building a model for an STL, then I would build my model in the highest quality that I could get because it's always going to maintain that resolution, you know, um, and, and everything that it was built on. And that's why, you know, sometimes when you purchase a model online on eBay or whatever, you know, sometimes you get good quality models. Sometimes you get models that are a little rough around the edges and things. And, uh, uh, you know, the, um, the, uh, you, you get to, to notice that, uh, that uh, th there is quality differences and stuff. It just depends on who the model maker is and what they made it with. Now, let's, okay, so I think I've beat that one to the bush. You're right from the bar, bat, right from the start, uh, right off the bat, uh, you've got uh, in your job setup, you thought, you know, maybe from my instruction or my telling you, you know, hey, uh, for the preview quality, it gives you a 98% representation, blah, blah, blah. Uh, you thought that um, that's really all it did. And um, uh, it wasn't a laborator told to you that, hey, uh, that resolution does much more than that for us. Uh, when our models are created, it will um, affect the overall resolution of that model, ultimately affecting the overall quality of our cut, right? Um, so you can, you, can, uh, you can point the finger at me. Now... Um, let's talk about uh, uh, number point number two. When you're working with a model, your white space, your white space, meaning my board, if I was carving just this model, okay, uh, I would want to maximize as much as I can, even if I ro had to rotate my model uh, somewhat and let it uh, regenerate and then I'm going to F9 to move it to the center of my board but we want to minimize the white space around our model uh, the uh, quality of our cut um, is uh, if we maximize the model uh, within the area you know in the in the area that it's going to cover in the part uh, the our board size should be slightly larger than our model, okay? That we plan to cut out, okay? Um, if we if we took this model here and let's say that this was my board, and I was, uh, or maybe I made my board the size of my table, or or a four by eight sheet of plywood, or whatever, you know, uh, twenty four by forty sheet of plywood, or, or not plywood, but you know what I mean, panel. Um, and my model was only getting cut out of 15 inches by 15 inches of that. Um, I would not have, you know, let's say that my, let's, let's pretend that my board here is, uh, you know, 40 inches long by 24 inches wide. And my model is a small uh, 10 inch by 10 inch, you know, model that's getting cut out of that big board out of the you know small corner or something well then I, I definitely I'm, I'm hurting myself and I'm hurting the quality of the model by creating that full size sheet and then generating the model in a really small format on that sheet it's absolutely gonna you know it's gonna pixelate um, uh, we want to make sure if I if I was cutting the part this model out of a area on my big board that was you know 10 inches by 10 inches then my project size is going to be 10 inches by 10 inches and my model is going to take up 98 percent of that board area that white area we're going to eliminate that white area and all um, and if I if if need be to get the model to cover as much as that uh, whiteboard as possible, our board here on our screen, if I have to rotate it, if I have to, you know, we just want to minimize that white space. Uh, so don't ever, don't ever create a full size sheet with a model getting cut out, you know, a one small part of it. Make your sheet to size so that your model uh, is at its maximum, you know, resolution uh, and uh, taking up as many pixels as it can, and our white space is minimalized. Um, uh, so that's tip number two for obtaining, you know, uh, good quality. 
Now, one of the things uh, that uh, should be um, important to us is uh, when we cut out. So if I have a model that um, has a lot of flat areas, um, then I, I do not want to use my... Um, my 3D tool path, my 3D finish or 3D rough, whatever. I don't want to use my 3D tool path um, to cut out uh, this part um, in any way whatsoever. Uh, I would, and this fish is not a good example of that. We're we're about to jump over into the aspire, but whenever possible, I want to create a vector boundary around those areas let's say that um oh what would be a good one for this let's get rid of the tropical fish for a moment and and let's see if uh oh mighty mouse what would be a good representation of this let's go into our decorative here and let's grab one of these models. All right. And let's maximize this up. Let's get in a full straight on view here. And let's maximize this up. And I'm going to hit F as soon as it regenerates. I'm going to hit F9 and center it. And I would, you know, of course, uh, rule of thumb, I'd make my board much smaller so I minimize the white space. But um, for uh, what I'm doing here, for the what I'm explaining is, uh, you know, I want to um, use this. So if we have a model, whether we've created the model or we brought the model in that has a lot of straight edges uh, in here, um, we, we, we want the 3D area uh, to be carved with the 3D area. So I would create vector boundaries around here, uh, limiting the 3D model cut to those boundaries. Uh, so it, it doesn't cut beyond this outer edge here and doesn't cut beyond this inner edge here uh, and let my 3D tool path, you know, cut that. But these edges here, um, to get the best quality edge, you know, on these straight edges and stuff, uh, I'm going to use my profile toolpath, my pocket toolpath, uh, one of my 2D toolpaths uh, to cut that out to get a better cut quality. Uh, I would achieve a better cut quality on those straight edges and stuff with my 2D toolpath. Uh, than I would using the 3D toolpath, you know, and, and letting it cut it out uh, type thing where it comes, where that bit comes all the way down to the edges. You know, it comes around and comes down, comes around and comes down and everything. So uh, whenever possible, we want to utilize the tool inside the 3D modeling tools of creating a vector boundary around the component. And in this case, if I did that, not only does this create the vector boundary on the outside edge of the model at the at the end of that shape here but it also creates that vector boundary on the inside of the model limiting so when i'm machining i'm machining my 3d tool path within those selected vectors okay and um, then i'm using a profile cut to uh, cut those edges um, you know, on the inside and the outside, I'm using a profile cut to cut those edges rather than just letting that part get cut all the way out from top to bottom all the way around, you know, with my 3D cut uh, because I'm not going to get a very good uh, quality uh, cut for that. So um, the uh, key to it all is, is... Um, uh, let's see here. What's the best way to explain? Explain. Explain to me what you mean, Lainey. Um, let's. Uh, the best way to explain this is, uh, and 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 L is. Uh, let's go into the Aspire software. So, 
we're going to uh, take a moment and uh, oops hold on a second Am I cutting out? I haven't been looking at my text here, so let's back up a little bit. We're going to pause for the cause for a moment. Um, let's see here. Let's see. I hear. I see some people saying that. Uh, um, All right, so Howard was saying um, that I was cutting out. Uh, is um, Am I cutting out, guys and girls? Uh, we have heavy storms and stuff in the area, but uh, am I uh, cutting out? Okay, all right, just want to make sure because uh, I saw a lot of chatter going on in the group uh, about that. Um, we're going to close out of this and we're going to jump over into the Aspire software uh, so that I can demonstrate building a model and some of the things that affects us when we're building models and how it would relate to you guys and girls that are getting models, whether you get models from me, whether you buy models online or, or um, uh, whatever the case may be. Uh, so let's uh let's take a look and let's make sure that i'm uh not frozen and, and all that stuff i want to make sure you guys and girls are seeing me and and everything i should be i should be good i, I don't think i'm frozen okay so um i'm going to uh create a new file i am going to hold my shift key down uh, to when I click create a new file just so I have these additional options here but I'm not going to use them right now okay um, I am going to use a very high resolution uh, what we would what what we would normally have as our options and stuff uh, but I, I, I want to uh, come in and um, Let's uh, there, let's go with a ten by ten, three quarter inch material surface, uh, starting on the bottom left corner. And again, we're not. This is not really a, any project based or anything. This is to talk to you about your projects, uh, whether you're using existing vector or vectric models that came with your software. Whether you're using models that you purchased on Design and Make or eBay or uh, an, an, a model that uh, I have provided from one of the classes, when we bring this model into our software, when we generate this model, if we're creating it ourselves, if we have the Aspire, whether we open this model up from the Vetric library of our clip art that's in our software, whatever setup that we're using standard high or very high extremely high or maximum whichever one that model is going to be generated off of those pixels that we have set up in our job setup so the quality of that model is going to be based on that setup and that ultimately it will not get any better than that uh, and so ultimately our cut when our toolpath is created, our 3D finish and 3D rough, mostly our 3D finish, right? It's going to be based on the model that has been generated. So we want to, uh, if, you, if we're working with a model that has extremely high detail, then we want to do our best to get the best resolution right off the bat when we bring that model in. And we can't go back and change it after the fact. It's whatever that initial job setup is set at. Okay. Now, let's talk about let's talk about some of the things. Um, this is kind of a, this part is a little bit a little bit Aspire based. I am an Aspire. Uh, I am in Aspire currently, and it's Aspire based, and um, for the moment. 
and I'm going to uh, let me hold down my control key and create two circles here so a moment ago uh, I we were talking about uh, if we did have uh, vertical walls we want to avoid machining them with the 3d tool pass we instead want to use the 2d tool pass our, our profile cut and our pocket cut and and let me explain to you about this i'm going to go in i'm in aspire so it gives me the ability to create a model and so therefore i'm going to uh, create two models uh, this first one is going to be just a standard flat model uh, we're going to go uh, ha let's see let's go three eighths inches tall and it's just going to be a flat model and we're going to click apply now mind you i'm in the uh ex the extremely high seven times slower uh on this and everything all right now on my on this particular model of course you know that there's not there's no detail right there's no detail on the top of the model it's a flat component but around the edge, we have uh, we have a lot of pixelation. Um, I would not use my 3D tool path to cut this entire model. Ultimately, you know, kind of cutting it out. Whether I'm doing a offset cut, right, starting in the center, all the way around till that part is cut completely, because my cut quality on this pixeled edge here is uh is what i'm going to get you know i'm, I'm not going to get a good quality edge cut with that 3d model however if i use the 2d vector the 2d vector here to create a profile cut with that 2d uh, or two and a half d whatever you want to call it the 2d vector this pink line and i do a, a simple 2d profile cut um, then I'm going to achieve a much smoother edge cut than I would trying to cut this part out with a 3D cut. Now, what are some of the ways if we were actually had Aspire and we were building models? How do we minimize pixelation? How do we maximize the best quality that we can get um, and, uh, you know, out of our model? Uh, number one, use a very high or extremely high or whatever resolution. That's key number one. Okay, that's, that's going to be key number one fact. Avoid vertical walls. Okay, uh, avoid models uh, with ver creating vertical walls and models. Okay, uh, you want uh, angle shapes. You can add draft uh, to the model. Let's let's talk about what is adding draft. Uh, rather than having a vertical wall up and down, I can add when I'm creating my shape. I can add a little bit of draft to it, uh, meaning that there's a slight angle to my wall, to my shape height. How do we add draft? So uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, start a new component here. And I'm going to use the second circle, and I'm going to make. I'm going to build that same part. Uh, click apply and build that same model. And um, well, where the hell did my first model go? Hold on a second. Let me build my first model back. All right, let me get that one built. Is it there? Is it still there? Yeah, it's still there. Okay. I thought it was gone for a minute. Okay, so we're gonna build this model up. Okay, and I'm gonna get rid of this one because I accidentally built two on top of each other. Delete. All right, so let's switch over to our 3D view here. So we have two identical shapes uh, created. Well, this lower shape here I'm going to add a little bit of a draft to the edges. And this is a tool that is only available in the Aspire software. It's, it's not available. You can't add draft or anything 
uh, within uh, the Vetra VCarve Desktop or Pro because you don't have the ability to actually build models. So the way that you uh, get the best quality out of your models that you bring into your Vetra VCarve Desktop or Pro is you bring them in with that job setup of a, a you know uh, I, I always have recommended you know the extremely high that seven times slower um, and now you know how to access access the uh, other two options as well for maximum and you know supremely high and all that stuff um, but when we're building models when we do have a spire and we're building models how do we get the how do we build the best quality model well avoid uh, vertical walls uh, key number one when we're building shapes on top of shapes and we're building up models avoid vertical walls how do we avoid that vertical wall um, well one uh, if we were using the shape tool <clears throat> we can create uh, a instead of a flat model like I did a flat profile we can create an angular profile and we can limit the height to create that flat top so we get those angled walls you know on the outside or when the component is created we can add draft to that component okay and what this does is this creates a new component uh, from the model here and with draft and so we can adjust that draft angle to what we want it to be and so I'm gonna go with a 33 percent draft yeah 30 percent is fine and I'm gonna click apply and now I bet you it does both of them because I forgot to turn one off I'm gonna stop that for a minute let's stop that for a minute okay let's stop that for a minute let's close this tool let me turn off uh, my first model hide it for a second I want to hide it yeah I, I don't want to build a draft on both of them just on the first on the second one all right so let's go back up to our 30 and, and click apply <clears throat> uh, remember a while back ago I built the Mickey Mouse right um, I built the Mickey Mouse um, the uh, when I built those components, I built them, you know, just straight one on top of the other, the nose, the, you know, the mouth and things like that. Uh, and, um, and, uh, you know, but if I would have given it just a little bit of a draft now, 30 degree angles that I'm doing, this is an extreme. That's a, that's a, that's a pretty decent angle there. Um, and so let's close this and let's go through and with, uh, this one, and this one these two components together I'm gonna bake them together real quick <clears throat> see that cake rise I love that <laughs> I think that's funny as hell we're baking we're baking people giving it a little bit of a smoothing okay and uh, now I'm gonna give, now I'm gonna take and turn on, I'm gonna turn this off for a minute. I'm gonna turn on my uh, vertical here and I'm gonna give it a little bit of smoothing. Smoothing. Fair is fair, right? We gotta compare apples to apples. Fair is fair. Fair is fair. All right. And let's uh, click OK on that. All right, let's turn both of our components on and let's uh, get, I want to get uh, down the Y axis. Is it the Y axis here? Yep, 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 yep. Let's zoom in and let's tilt this a little bit. All right, let's see if I can do a, uh, let's see if I can do a spin. Oh, that's not a spin. Hold on a second. This one's a spin. Let me get this, try to get this right there. Let it regenerate. Okay, so <clears throat> let's zoom out. 
All right, so if we look at the model on the right that has a, uh, a little bit of a draft added to it, um, we've got nice uh, vertical wall or uh, angular walls, sorry. And so at the very bottom of that model where I'm going to be profile cutting, right? That vertical wall, you can see the pixelation at the bottom of this angle. Well, I'm going to be using my profile bit uh, to cut that out, my 2D profile. Uh, and um, therefore, when I create my uh, border around it, uh, my and I'm, I'm creating and I'm carving this model and all that I'm going to be using that selected vector as a kind of a boundary. And so I'm only going to be machining that uh, 3D model up to that point. And then this last little mm -hmm. bit right here from the bottom of my model up that whatever it may be, 32nd, 16th, whatever it is, um, uh, I'm going to be doing my profile cut. And when I cut that part out, I'm going to have a slight little offset so it's, my bit is actually cutting into that. And because it's not following the model, but it's following the vector, the 2D vector that I'm going to have surrounding this, uh, then um, I'm going to get a much smoother cut. I won't be getting that choppy cut right there. I'm going to get a nice clean cut. Now let's uh, look. Uh, let's come over here and um, same thing with this. Now it, it's hard to see because of the shadow. I wonder if I can turn this around like we're out of the shadow. Let's get out of the. See if we can get out of the shadow here. Let's go down the, bear with me, x-axis. There we go. Okay. So if we look at the vertical, the vertical, even though I added smoothing to this, uh, my smoothing is still a little um, rough around these upper edges, right? It's, you know, it's not very smooth. You can see these wavy lines here. Uh, and especially on the vertical, you can see that vertical cut, right? Well, once again, um, I'm going to be uh, surrounding this with a boundary. My, my model is going, my 3D cut is going to be focusing on the 3D area. And this is a terrible example because it's only flat. So there's not that much to it. But, uh, and then I'm going, when I cut this part out, I'm going to be using that vector uh, and, uh, you know, getting a nice smooth cut. It will not be following the model, all these little bumps and ridges, boom, 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 all the way around. It's going to be following that nice smooth vector around uh, giving me a nice clean cut uh, and uh, especially if I'm using a spiral tool path and things so uh, long story short uh, how do we increase our model quality number one uh, increase the resolution from the job setup from the start okay when we're building the model build in the highest resolution uh, even if we export that out right we export it out uh, as in our highest resolution, uh, we can bring it into other jobs and things as an STL or what have you, and it'll have a much finer resolution, even if we're going into kind of an extremely high or standard view. Um, number two, um, put a little bit of an angle uh, or a draft. Uh, use your sculpting tools um, in, in, in there and you use your sculpting tools. Uh, to uh, smooth out those edges and things uh, to uh, you know um, improve the, the quality of our 3d model um, and if you do if you if there's no way around it and you do have vertical edges that you're cutting out uh, machine them with your profile or pocket cut or whatever it may be uh, with that 2d toolpath versus the 3d model limit the 3d models cut to uh, a boundary and do the do mm -hmm. the vertical walls uh, with your um, 2d tool pass um, you know now this is a uh, just a small little 
um, glimpse of uh, a small little bit of uh, information uh, to find out more about resolution and how you can um, improve it we can uh, go into there's a PDF in the Vetric bum, 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 bum. there is a PDF in the Vetric software it is I swear there's a PDF in the Vetric software hold on a second I'm trying to find Trying to find the link for you guys. I'm going to see if I can paste the link straight into the chat room. Um, stand by. Go to... I'm going to get the link. Bear with me one second. Metric.com. Hey now, somebody's. Bum, 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 bum. copy and in your guys's chat let's see how well this works out oh dang coming I got a black screen okay 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 I got a black screen hold on a second I know I know I know it's a black screen hey can you hear me can you hear me can you hear me I know I got a black screen I just noticed it. I just spotted my black screen. Uh, it's coming back. It's coming back. Give it a second. Okay. I'm glad you can hear me. Um, it's coming. The, the screen's coming back. I don't understand why I have a black screen. There we go. Sorry about that. Uh, let's see here. Um, all right, let's go back up. You have uh, Howard Grows if you're still with me. We do have a vibrate button. Um, uh, the vibrate button is uh, my text message. Uh, I got my phone on vibrate, and um, I knew that I knew that I had a. Um, I knew that I had a black screen as soon. I knew I had something. I, I didn't know I had a black screen, but I knew I had something that I had to pay attention to because my phone went nuts. Um, so hopefully, <laughs> so it made me look at the chat area. Um, all right, let's see here. Okay, so the if you guys uh, did you see that um, that support page that I posted? Uh, 10 minutes ago support page um, that I posted uh, let's see if I I'm gonna paste it again just in case uh, paste and I'm gonna put it in there again uh, this is a PDF that goes into a buttload of detail on modeling resolution uh, model structuring okay model structuring and resolution and um, uh, it is uh, it's a it's a it's a it's a great document um, and but it's a it's a it's a read you know um, it's only uh, what is it only 
six pages. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, six or seven pages. But it is uh, wonderfully uh, detailed. Um, uh, wonderful detail of uh, how of everything that it's, it's basically it, it encompasses everything that we're talking about tonight about achieving the best quality of your model cuts whether it's a vetric model that came with your software whether it's a model that you purchased online whether it's a STL or a model file that uh, you know you've uh, obtained from the digital wood carver owners Facebook group or from me or whatever um, uh, it, when you create a job and you want a good quality cutting model because this model has a lot of detail, then do not use the standard view, you know, the standard in your setup, your job setup. Um, use the, um, use either the high or the very high. And in extreme cases, uh, you can use the extremely high and the maximum, you know, and that's what I would tend to use if I was building a model, okay, and and everything. But um, this this PDF that I just gave you guys and girls, this is for everyone, desktop, pro, Aspire. Uh, this applies to models that you're that that come with the software this applies to you know uh setup of models you know that you purchased online and you're importing in this applies to you know your aspire users that are building models um if you know uh if you know the most information uh that you can um about uh about you know how the resolution on the left side, you know, and that job setup affects the models, then you're you're winning the game. You know what I mean? And I'm sure because I trained most of you, I never in the training covered what the modeling resolution uh, does to a model. I've only covered and stated that it gives us the highest uh, preview. You know, a 98% preview, uh, you know, uh, uh, representation of what our cut's going to look like. Um, but at no time did I ever mention that, hey, um, you know, use the uh, extremely high or the very high because it helps with the, the, the resolution of your model and your actual finished cut. At no time did I ever do that during your training and stuff. So I'm providing that information to you now. Uh, man, you know, if I if I, if I ask for a raise of hands of how many people knew this, some of you might. Some of you might have done your homework already from other groups, from uh, Vetric tutorials, uh, from uh, this PDF, and all you may have known that. Uh, some of you, this may be news to you. You might be hearing about it the first time, and uh, whichever way, now you know. And again. In our model resolution, right from the setup, so we're, uh, we're going to close this, close, no change. Uh, if we just hit our create new file, then we're going to have our three options here. If we come in and we create, uh, hold down our shift key when we before we click or during the click of create new file, then uh, we will have the additional options of uh, resolution. And again, the extremely high is working with over 8 million pixels. Uh, the maximum is 16 million pixels. These are extreme cases that you would ever really use these. And just be mightily aware that if you go to preview this cut, it's going to take 50 times longer to preview that maximum resolution cut that 3d model than it would as if you were in a standard mode or something like that. um i if i was creating a job that was uh 2d strictly 2d uh, vectors you know v carve whatever the case may be then i would you know i'd be working in a standard mode because it has no effect whatsoever on our 2d machining and two and a half d machining um but if i'm working with models uh, if I'm creating models, if I'm working with models, existing models, then I'm working in a very high resolution, uh, at the, you know, uh, which would be the standard, you know, seven times slower. Because I can, you know, I can handle that. Uh, but if I'm building models, if 
for you guys and girls and stuff like that, then I would be working in an extremely high or maximum. And trust me, I do not preview those cuts. Uh, I build the model, export it out as an STL. Bob's my uncle. Done. Because <laughs> that's 50 times slower. Um, so, um, and, um, uh, yeah, see, like Dennis, you know, like you said, you know, you heard about it a while ago. You never take it off very high, and that's it. We, as standard users, we are going to only be using these first three options, high, very high, or standard. In extreme cases, and one of the extreme cases is, and I don't know if he's in the class tonight, um, but uh, Ken Singleton uh, was... Um, talking about and it was in the group as well but uh, that American flag that American flag in the Eagle now that is a model that I posted up in uh, the Facebook group right uh, many of you that have, have looked at that model and stuff you'll notice there's a lot of triangulation and stuff in there no matter how much you smooth you're still gonna get a little bit of triangulation and things and not a whole lot of detail um, what uh you know that's because that model was based off of that you know what i mean uh and um uh you know when it was when that stl model was sent out now i didn't create that model that's no you know it's not my model to create um but uh it, you know had it been uh created in a higher resolution all we wouldn't have had all that triangulation and um uh even bringing it into a uh because it is an stl model we can if i if i bring it into an extremely high or maximum or or what have you i can i can achieve a better quality when it generates that preview but but internally i'll never be able to improve that model because the triangulation and let's let's see if i can find that model um and I'm going to go with a uh, very high here. Let's see if I can find that model. So modeling uh, import and go to my Uh, DXF files, clip art, STL models. Hold on. Ah, uh, it's here somewhere. Uh, it is here somewhere. Eagle, what was it called? I think it was called Eagle and Flag. There, oh, no, nope, that's the bear. On an A, B, C, D, E. Well, oh, shoot. Um, I could pull it off of the Flag and Eagle, Eagle and Flag. Daggummit. I wanted to show you guys the triangulation that I was referring to. And um, eagle and flag. All right, bear with me. There's one more place that I can look. And that would be uh, 2D STL convert windows, 3D models. Nope. I'd probably have to get it off of the uh, um, off of the uh, pixelation. Um, but anyhow, it uh, it had a lot of tri uh, triangulation uh, with the wireframe, uh, depending on what program it was created in that uses uh, uh, triangulation to uh, create its SCLs. There was a lot of it, and therefore. 
it uh, you know no matter what I could use I could I could have it generate in its highest quality you know using extremely high but because that model was uh, they that they created in a low resolution very very poor triangulation uh, it's not gonna ever be its best and like Steven said you know there's always rest machining now uh, Steven that's not fair because only aspire users have that ability <laughs> you know that uh, you know the poor the, you know the the uh, vcar pro people and uh, desktop people don't have rest machining and rest machining is a way to utilize a larger machine a larger bit to machine a uh, majority of the the um uh, the model and then come back with a smaller bit and touch up the detail areas the rest of the model basically where the big bit couldn't get into and it's called rest machining um and all but even that uh uh steven uh if i created a model if i imported a model in a standard view that one million pixels no matter how much rest machining i do i'm still not going to obtain the maximum quality that i could get out of that model is if i was uh if i opened it up in a setup a job setup that had a very high you know a higher very high resolution um uh with you know more a little a few more pixels and stuff um bob rest machining is the uh taking a model and let's uh let me find something with a little detail in here Taking a model and creating a uh, your 3D finish, you know, toolpath. Um, let's let me get my material set up right. And uh, I'm gonna let's use a larger diameter bit. That's whole, the whole benefit of rest machining. I'm gonna use my um, I'm gonna use my I'll use my eighth inch end mill. Just a you know my eighth inch end mill, eighth 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 uh, ball nose end mill. I keep saying end mill, but ball nose. Oh Lord have mercy. There we go. All right, and I'm going to use the model as a boundary. For this and um, I'm going to raster cut and calculate this so it should take a, should take just a few seconds to calculate <clears throat> now in something like this you know to I mean really rest machining would be you'd be using something like a quarter inch ball nose to machine it out and then uh, going down to a 30 second to do the rest of the areas but all right so let's preview this cut and um, it's gonna take a minute to carve out um, here let's Let's stop this for a second. Speed it up a little bit. We'll go very high instead of extremely high. Um, and by the way, that preview simulation quality, uh, that has nothing to do with the job setup and the modeling resolution, guys and girls. This is the preview simulation quality not the modeling resolution. But rest machining is, I would take my larger bit, and uh, in this case, an eighth inch end mill, and I would generate my finished tool path, and as soon as the finished tool path is uh, cre uh, completed, then I'm going to create an actual component, an actual model, from this toolpath preview. Let's take a look at this toolpath preview. You can see here all of the tool marks. 
around the feathers and things uh, where my eighth inch bit uh, didn't really get in there so it was leaving these tool marks behind okay so now with this um, I'm going to go into uh, the model option and create component from but before I click before I click create component from toolpath preview I'm going to hold the control key so if I hold the control key and then click create component from toolpath preview it's going to create a let me get back into my modeling tab here it's going to create a uh, preview and if you look at these white areas here these subtly white areas and all these are the areas where my detail bit my smaller bit is going to be used uh, so how do we okay how do we tell it to carve in those areas well now we take with that uh, that preview visible just the toolpath preview turn off your original model um, we go into the drawing tab and we trace that model we're gonna turn on the black and white trace now uh, let's turn the fading off so you can see this okay so as I slide this component uh, to one extreme or the other I'm gonna you know get a certain amount of uh, you know previous stuff well I want to go all the way to the far extreme the far white uh, the minimum and tick by tick I have a you can use your up arrow key on your keyboard your down arrow key whatever you want to use uh, but we're going to um, basically come to a point where if I go all the way to my maximum right that's black uh, then I'm not that's not doing me anything right so I'm gonna back up and I want the I want to get as much as that white to show before before it comes to a blank right so if I back off that one tick here this maximum point you know even here you know I could do as well you know um, I'm going to trace this area and now these vectors are my boundaries so I'm going to apply that and close that tool and I probably should have used the other tick with this but anyway um, and now I'm gonna go back into that modeling I'm gonna turn the toolpath preview off I'm gonna turn my model back on and I'm gonna select all my vectors and now I'm going to create a second finished toolpath using the selected vectors as a boundary and using a smaller bit you know 16th inch ball nose 32nd inch ball nose whatever it may be in this case I'll do the 16th inch just for time's sake uh, and I'm gonna use that uh, those vectors as a boundary and I'm gonna calculate that toolpath uh, one open vector was identified so we'll go ahead and ignore that one whichever one it was uh, probably that straight line that's right there on his chest but it's gonna go through and calculate this toolpath and it's only gonna calculate it within those areas and it's only going to carve instead of re-carving my whole model all over again it's only going to carve within those vector areas and these are areas where uh, my bigger bit didn't really get into and everything so uh, let this uh, generate <clears throat> okay and let's go ahead and let's see if uh, watch around the feathers and everything uh, you'll see it's it's just going around and cleaning up those areas where that bigger bit couldn't get so it's called rest machining because it comes back and does the rest of the job with a smaller bit you know so it's jumping back and forth and it's just touching up all those areas and things so that's rest machining uh, in a rough nutshell 
Uh, it's just a way to uh, utilize a bigger bit uh, to kind of machine the part and then come back and touch up the detail areas with the smaller parts and things like that. So, um, and in this case for the Eagle, 16th of an inch bit doesn't cut it, right? I would typically go with my 32nd inch ball nose. So I, because if I'm going to go through the process of rest machining, then I want to, you know, I want to obtain the best detail and quality that I can, because even looking at this, um, and I'm not worried about the outside perimeter that's getting cut out. But if I look at my feathers and all, um, a lot of the areas did get cleaned up and stuff a little bit, but I still see tool marks meaning that my 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 16th inch bit didn't do anything for me so if i go back and i recalculated this with my detail bit my 32nd inch tapered ball nose which is that one zero one six is that right uh zero three one two five. yes okay uh and uh we calculate that oh hold on using the vector machine still got that one open vector um now you know it's going to take a moment uh to really go through and carry that's a small bit so it'll take a moment but that's what rest machining is bob uh, in a nutshell uh, that's what rest machining is. Uh, basically, taking a larger bit, cutting out your design, and coming back and doing the rest of the design with a smaller toolpath. But um, it, the, I can, whether I use re the rest machining technique or not, it all, you know, it's it's based on what my model was generated at. You know, I'm I'm, I'm never going to achieve a better quality than what my model was generated at in that model, that job setup uh, resolution and all. And so um, now, we should be able to see as it goes through and cleans up and everything, we should be able to see, I should have zoomed in so you guys could see the, um, the cleanup of the uh, tool pass and stuff. But anyway, that's what rest machining is. Uh, yes, 46280 is the small bit. You're exactly right. That is the Amana 32nd inch uh, ZRN coated tapered ball nose. Now, I am noticing something I'm noticing that I'm an idiot hold on a second here <laughs> my trace lines got traced around all the areas that <laughs> I wanted to cut oh hold on a minute um, I need to add I need to reverse this Stand by, ladies and gentlemen. I want to turn on my boundary here. Please select a component. Dirt, dirt, dirt. Oh my goodness, Lenny. Create a boundary, that outside vector boundary. Did it do it? Did it do it? Yeah, it did. Okay. And now I'm going to come in and recalculate that toolpath. Um, I was cutting, my vectors were drawn in all the wrong areas. Uh, so now I've just basically reversed this. Uh, toolpath by having this outer boundary yay Laney for being so smart um, we're gonna calculate that one my goodness gracious all right now we're gonna see it get clean. <laughs> uh, Leanne Smith hubby and I have looked for the 1 16th inch bit and the 1 32nd inch bitch can't find it in our area Laney do you have it absolutely do we sure do. Um, uh, we have it in our... Uh, now, the 32nd, we don't have. The 32nd. Now, you see... Now, look at the... Look at the... This is the proper tool path right here. See all my blue line? If I'd have been paying attention, uh, then... Um, and let's zoom in. Let's see if we can zoom in so we can really see this. All right. And uh, we're going to go back. And now, 
watch, uh, see if you can see it uh, closely as it goes through and watch between the feathers and stuff and, and everything. You can see it go in and kind of clean up all of those little areas and it bringing out the detail in all these little humps and feathers and things all the way around. You can see that detail start to come out and you can really see it up in the upper part of the wings and all. And um, uh, <clears throat> that, ladies and gentlemen, is the proper rest machining. <laughs> I was a little backwards. I was a little backwards on that first one. Um, so anyhow, that's rest machining. Um, let me let me say this to you, uh, Leanne. Um, the we have the white side sixteenth uh, inch ball nose bit. We have the white side eighth inch uh, tapered ball nose bit. As far as the Amana ZRN coated uh, bits, we only have uh, our four piece and eight piece uh, bit set. Now we do have uh, we do have those two bits, and I can order them and we can drop ship them to you. Absolutely, we have those bits, but you won't see them on the website. So you will have to call in. Eventually, I'm going to have all of our Amana bits that we carry on the website. Right now, we don't have them in. Uh, and I've been sending you guys to tools today and stuff and blah, blah, blah. Well, you can order them from us and we drop ship it to you. Um, it'll drop ship straight from a mana. But um, so the uh, 32nd inch uh, and the um, 16th inch, you can order from us if you need to. Absolutely. Uh, otherwise, our competition is toolstoday.com and they carry them but we would love for you to order the bits from us absolutely um, without a doubt all right so uh, any questions okay now we, we kind of jumped into rest machining because someone asked that question and everything uh, but any I, I this is this 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 was not we weren't doing a project tonight it was a it was kind of a tips class because you there's a lot of you that are just now getting into 3d modeling as far as 3d model carving let me say that for you guys and girls you know you just you're just now dipping your toes into 3d model carving um and um there's uh, many of you that are that have been doing it for you know uh for for a while now you know 3d model carving but this may or may not have been information that you were aware of. You may not have realized how the modeling resolution area of the job setup affects your 3D models. You know, the modeling resolution. And most in case and point, or most of that uh, falls back on me uh, as your instructor when I did your orientation training. And, um, you know, uh, most of that, you know, falls back on me because I never, this is the very first time that I've ever brought it up to you guys and girls and everything. Um, and, uh, but now, you know, right? So, uh, standard and high, you know, or even very high, if you're doing 2d stuff, you know, you're, 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 you're drawing your V carving, you know, your engraving, all that stuff, you know, your, your pocket cuts and everything, you know, standard stuff. But if you're working with a design that has a 3d model in it, uh, definitely set your resolution high. Um, try to minimize your white space as much as possible. Uh, if it's a project that has a model in it, um, then make sure that that project, the boundaries of it, or whatever the case may be, you know, uh, minimize your white space as much as possible uh, and, and everything. Um, where that model is and all um, and uh, maximize it up uh, you know if it's a model that you're cutting out you know like uh, Ken Singleton showed me this eagle uh, or owl or eagle or flag uh, medallion looking thing that you guys did in the Facebook group it was real nice somebody did a uh, really cool looking round uh, medallion there's a lot of detail in that one right um, well that gets cut out it's round 
that would be maximized as much as possible to minimize the white space around there. And uh, even if you had to rotate the model in some way to make it cover as much as the white space as possible um, to minimize it, uh, that actually improves the quality as well. Uh, we want we want it, we want the model to take up as many as the res the, the pixels as, as much as possible and we don't want the white space taking up the pixels um, and then if you're building models in aspire uh, uh, or even uh, forget okay let, before I jump to the aspire uh, if you're working with models and you're cutting models out and things like that uh, on your straight edges and all uh, limit the 3d modeling use your vectors you know selected vectors and stuff and limit the modeling to the model area and then use your 2d toolpaths like your pocket cuts and profile cuts to machine those uh, vertical areas and flat areas and things like that uh, one it optimizes your toolpaths you know uh, and uh, because there's no sense in 3d machining a flat area absolutely no sense in it whatsoever that's just a waste of time Use your pocket toolpath for that. You reserve your 3D toolpath and you can restrict the 3D. If I had a 3D model, um, uh, am I still in Aspire? I'm in Aspire, okay, good. If I had a 3D model, stand by a moment. It'll make sense in a minute. Uh, select this guy here go to the center and build a shape uh, if I learn how to click the right tab I'm gonna give it a little bit of a shape to it 60 degrees we'll go 3 8 inches tall uh, we'll click uh, no limit apply All right, and then start a new component, and I want to build this donut middle area up here for some reason, whatever the case may be. I'll build it as a flat component. Uh, we'll go a quarter inch tall. Right here's here's two things that I'm about to be uh, incorrect on in building this model. Okay, number one, I'm building this flat shape on this vector here. And if you look very, very, very closely, there is a, there's white space. There's a gap, right? There's a hole between there. So when I build this model up, click apply. When I build this model up, um, the if we look and look very closely at this model, you see these vertical legs coming up in here um, that's because I have all that white space. There's, there's no, there's a gap. There's a hole there, right? So, um, I can, uh, when I'm building a model, you never want to do this. You never want to do this. Number one, you definitely want to change it to a merge option. You know, that's going to get rid of that. But I still, but I still have a void between here. I still have a void in here we always want to overlap our model so in this case i would reset this and i would take this inside vector here and i would offset it let's go into my drawing tab for a minute i would offset it outward oh ever so slightly let's go with uh, 0.0 four deleting the original there we go could have probably went 0.03 let's undo that 0.03 i don't need to overlap it that much 0.03 there we go and now my part my shape that i'm building is going to be built off of that uh and uh quarter inch and uh click apply okay now there is absolutely no my motto is devoid <laughs> is that the right term devoid of voids so there's no gap devoid of gaps is that what it mean um there's absolutely no gaps in there okay now 
Number one, um, when you're machining, when you're machining this, if I was if I was cutting this part out for whatever odd reason, I am going to limit my 3D cutting to do the 3D area. I am not going to have my 3D cut cut this whole model because that's a waste of time. One is I'm not going to get a clean cut on this vertical wall in here. But two, why would I 3D cut a flat area? You know, I would use my pocket toolpath for this. Okay? I would use my pocket toolpath for this. So we would create vector boundaries. We would create vector boundaries. I have my outside boundary here, and I have my inside boundary. And you can see uh, if we right click, remember you guys learned this in last week's class, right? Object properties, turn that fading off. Okay, you can see where my model, the highest point of my model, the dome and everything. Well, I'm going to limit my 3D cut here. And it's even though it's coming around the edge, that bit is not going to come down into the vertical. Okay, it's not it's going to stay in the top upper shape part. One, because my eighth inch ball nose bit, you know, the diameter of the bit's going to be out here and it's only going to go so far and everything. Uh, because I'm going to use my uh, pocket cut to do that flat cut that's going to cut that vertical down, down to my pocket. So with those selected, I when I'm creating my tool path, I'm going to uh, use the, uh, let's give a little bit of, give a little bit of love. A little bit of height to that. I'm going to, Uh, use the selected vectors as the boundary. Uh, let's change this back to a standard uh, eighth inch ball nose bit and click calculate. Would be nice to see. Wouldn't that be nice? Uh, it would be nice, Dennis. It would be. Dennis says it would be nice to see how Laney uses uh, 2D rule, uh, rail sweeps and stuff. Um, I'll show you. Uh, give me a second. Uh, all right. So in my 3D view, now see if you look at my model, right? It's limited to just the shape. That 3D cut. Let's go in here and let's preview that selected toolpath. I'm only uh, my model. Uh, my modeling toolpath is only cutting that model. It is it is not cutting down the vertical sides. Uh, you know I'm not wasting time. I'm not wasting time machining flat areas with a 3D model cut. Uh, this is going to number one optimize my machining time. It's going to you know uh, you know make things cleaner. Blah blah blah. Now so now. Now I would have my inside vector. This would be my pocket cut. And let's see here, uh, 0 0.25, 0 0.25. It's only got a model height of where is it at, boom. And it's going to be a pocket cut with a cut depth. And I'm working down. Okay, I'm working down. So let's look at, let's do some math here, guys and girls. Right? Uh, I'm trying to tilt my 2D view like a dumb arse. Okay, so my cut depth of my model is. Uh, there, there is no um, math here. Uh, we just in our cut depth, 0. 0.4412. Look at, look at the very bottom right of my screen. Not where that window popped up. Very bottom right of the screen. My model's depth here on the Z is 0. 0.4412. Okay, 
that is going to be my depth of cut. One, two, too many decimal points. Uh, in this case, heck, I could use a half inch end mill to minimize machining time. Um, if you have a half inch mill, I'll use, let's, let's be normal. We'll use a quarter inch end mill, quarter inch end mill. Um, -dum 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 -dum. Uh, in this case, I'm going to use an offset cut versus a raster. One, I'm going to achieve a much cleaner cut, uh, using the offset cut. Uh, and two, there's no, um, call from Jacqueline Mally. Sorry, Jacqueline. Call from Jacqueline Mally. Uh, okay, she'll have to leave a message, Jacqueline. Okay. Um, number one is, uh, the offset cut uh, when I'm doing a pocket or something. Yeah. Uh, st stand by for a moment. Okay, uh, sorry about that. Just like in the movies. Um, all right, so the um, raster cut or the offset cut is when I'm doing a pocket, if it's a flat area and stuff, it's not a model, there's not any detail in there, uh, then the offset cut is going to be the more optimized and I'm going to get a much cleaner cut on these walls, these inside walls, versus if I was doing a raster back and forth, bumping, 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 bumping. So we're going to use the offset cut. All of that just to say that. Okay, so we're going to uh, make sure my vector is selected. And we're going to calculate that toolpath. Okay, now want to take a close look at this all right so notice uh, that I have this lip here well that lip is not part of my model right it needs to be gone um, and uh, <laughs> the uh, uh, that is not supposed to be there right so what we need to do is because the pocket was cutting up to our vector we need to give it a little bit of an allowance. We need it to. We need to allow it to go beyond our vector slightly. Um, and in this case, uh, we would probably. Uh, I would say. And this is what the pocket allowance is. Uh, I would probably say. Um, let's start off slow. Let's start off small. Let's go uh, ten thousandths of an inch. Let's see if that uh, let's see if that ten thousandths of an inch. Um, oops, I think I went. I should be. Bear with me a second. Uh, ba ba bum. Calculate. All right, let's take a look at the I'm in my 2D view. <coughs> oh, goodness gracious. There we go. All right, so I went 10,000 seven inch in the wrong direction. All right, so that's what I was looking for. Uh, if you're wondering what I was doing, I was going into my 2D view so I could see my toolpath. This needs to be a negative ten thousandths of an inch. We need to go negative. Uh, we're going. We're inside the cut. We're negative. We're going to go outward. Um, I don't you. There we go. 
All right, so let's preview that cut. Let's see if that uh, got our got rid of our lip. Mm, close, but no cigar. Let's go uh, one more time. Uh, let's go. Yeah, let's go 0 0.03. Let's let's maximize it up there. Preview that cut again. All right. So probably about a 0.025. I look cut a little deep into that one. Now, as far as the outside profile, same thing. That would be a profile cut. Uh, you know to maximize you know that and so my 3d cut is only cutting my 3d model I would never machine uh, flat areas uh, with um, You know with a 3d cut I wouldn't let that 3d cut run boom boom You know all the way across and all because it's a waste of time. Why do that? Um, click this to be saved as clip art um, Can this be saved as clip art. Absolutely, John. Yeah, you can create models in Aspire software and export it out as uh, um, clip art. Uh, you go to, if I have this model here, let me turn this model back on. My little donut back on here. Let me close the preview. Oops, wrong model. Both of them. Uh, let's say that this was a model. Uh, I would go to model and export out as 3D clip art. And this will create a uh, the V3M or 3D clip art file, um, you know, uh, which is, is basically similar to the V3M, but it's a 3D clip which can only be opened up in Aspire. Um, if I wanted to export it out uh, to be able to be opened up in vCarve Pro or vCarve Desktop, then um, I would export it out as an STL. So, but I would, me personally, if I'm using it for my own personal use, then I would export it or, or maybe uh, going to uh, provide it as a model available for Aspire users only. Then I would export it out as a 3D clip art. Uh, but if I'm uh, exporting it out as a model uh, for everybody to use, then I would export it out as an STL. Okay. All right. Now, all right. So anyway, one, uh, the, the effect of what this has is it, it, ex, it, it optimizes our tool paths, you know, by not machining flat areas with a 3D tool path, as well as uh, angled areas and stuff. Now, uh, avoid angle walls, right? You know, what if I, what if I wanted to, uh, for whatever reason, what if this wasn't flat? What if it was a dome and I had these vertical walls here? Um, what can I do to, um, you know, uh, make it uh, a little better. Well, I can uh, get rid of, I can avoid the vertical walls. I can add a little bit of an angle to my walls or a little bit of a draft, right? Um, uh, the outside profile, maybe not so much as a draft on that one uh, because I might need that to be a vertical cut. But um, let's take these two components and let's bake them together. Baking a cake, baby, baking a cake. Shake and bake. All right, and then I'm going to regenerate this model uh, and add a draft to it. And in this case, it would be a very uh, small angle uh, because I don't want to, I don't want to extreme, you know, on this donut or whatever, you know, it, it may be that I'm creating. Uh, so I'm just going to regenerate with a small angle to get rid of the vertical uh, walls and stuff. And that slight uh, angle uh, really didn't do much for me. So let's... Uh, Let's go with 10, the default. Let it go, let it go, let it go. Let it go. 
it's only it's only going to be a black screen while it's pre while it's generating this model, uh, ladies and gentlemen. So stand by. It will turn off. So it will come back. We will be back in just a second. I know, I know, Ron. It's only going to do that. It's coming back. <clears throat> I know, you guys don't have to text me. You should be able to hear me at least. Give it a second. It's coming back. It's coming. There you go. <laughs> it uh, the black screen happens when my Aspire software uh, is uh, generating a model. Um, is uh, you know, and it was generating a model using a lot of the uh, CPU, which is the same. Uh, the, 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 this, the broadcaster I use is uses CPU. Um, so the model, uh, you know, with a little bit of an angle to it and all, um, you know, this is only a 10%, uh, draft. Let's turn that off here. There you go. So you can see the giving it a little bit of a draft. Uh, to avoid the vertical of the wall and um, you know smoothing it out this I would not do this if I was doing a vertical cut like I we were just talking about about the pocket cut because now this draft has an angle and my end mill that's doing the pocket cut is not gonna get cut that angle you know what I mean it's going to uh, cut uh, you know the model so I would have my 3D model cut this. Now, as far as if this was a dome or something in here, that would be the case. But if it's a flat area, then I'm going to use my uh, vector to pocket that flat area out still. But notice where my model now stops. You see that white area? I would size this down. Um, I would size this down to be within that, you know, that area to f do that flat pocket. Okay. Um, I know Dennis is the drill maker. I know, I know. Um, and then, yeah, but it, it goes black screen uh, when it's uh, that. And so now I would cut this, you know, now I would re-machine this uh, and notice my vectors, you know. Um, if I, uh, you know, were to uh, resize this. my boundaries and then I would you know machine them just like we talked about two seconds ago with the pocket cut and all that stuff but I, I would not want to get cut my angle walls I want those to be part of the 3d model cut all right ladies and gentlemen I uh, don't want to overcomplicate this I just want you to know wanted you to know tonight about the resolution your modeling resolution and your job setup and how it plays a role in the actual end result of your 3d model cuts um, and uh, hopefully uh, this little bit of information will give you uh, some insight. Now, as a little bit of a, some bonus footage, uh, Dennis asked about how I use my uh, two rail sweeps and things. Well, number one, uh, creating a sponge shape, uh, Dennis. If I was doing like a vessel or a platter, um, in a case, uh, you know, uh, of a vessel or a platter. Let me get rid of this model real quick. Oh, let's see here. Let's draw it out. 
All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is, uh, if I'm making a platter, I'm, I'm gonna, for the job setup, I'm going to work off the center uh, for the purpose of job setup. And uh, the reason why is because this platter, uh, if I was making a plate type, uh, you know, 3D carving, or not 3D carving, well, it would be a 3D model, but uh, like a platter, some kind of uh, a collective platter or plate or something, um, it's going to be uh, based off of revolving around this center point. And so I would, um, oh, I got another tool actor. Let me close this tool first. So the first thing I would do is I would, you know, create my uh, profile, whatever it may be. Now, <clears throat> from my uh, profile, let's uh, go into node editing mode. I don't want this bottom span here. Okay. And let's say that uh, if this was a platter, I'm going to insert a point. Oh my, oh my. Uh, let's see here, insert a point right about there. And I'm gonna take and insert a point right behind it. I'm gonna take these two points here and uh, drop them down. little bit of meat uh, these guys here so uh, this would be a little bit smoother transition so I would turn that into a Bezier curve and um, kind of smooth that point Oop, not that much smooth that curve out a little bit and uh, for the outer edge of the platter let's say a rim let's insert a point here uh, insert a point here and take these two guys and bump them up a little bit let's pull this one back kind of give it more of a slope than anything and let's uh, smooth that point straighten that line back out so I can give myself a nice little curve, smooth this point, straighten this line back out. So it transitions. And then uh, the revolve tool, uh, it's a new tool in version nine, I'll love it and all. This, uh, this turns a rotate, um, <clears throat> it turns, <laughs> This uh, spins around uh, the left endpoint, right? So where's my left endpoint? Way over here, right? The platter. So my platter is going to be out here. That's not what I want. So what I need to do is I got to mirror this because we always draw from right to left and when, with that particular tool. So I'm going to mirror this and flip it, uh, not create a mirror copy. I'm just going to flip it horizontally because it's going to revolve around the left endpoint. And um, uh, so when we open this tool out and everything and I spin around that point, uh, we're going to scale it to a, that's good, we'll leave it to whatever height it is right there and click apply to revolve uh, to create that platter, whatever it may be. Now, a little extreme on the lower part here, uh, you know, I'd probably minimize that up some but um, you kind of get the idea. Okay, uh, now this, this, uh, let's uh, get rid of this component. And this would be a, you know, a, a, I would add, I'd, you know, I'd add some slope to this. I need to shallow that up and all, but you know, and then I could do some V carving inside. Uh, if I wanted to, I would make my lip a little bit wider to put some text around the edge. You know, you've, you've seen those decorative collectible plates and all that people make and all that stuff. All right, um, let's, uh, let's delete that component. And let's take 
<clears throat> and I'm going to cheat. I'm going to cheat and I'm going to use a piece of clip art. And if I'm not mistaken, it's under objects and people. Is it? Maybe I'm maybe I'm delusional and think this in there. No, decorative. Why? No, it's not in there. Why did I think I had a Coke bottle? <laughs> all right, uh, that's all right. We'll draw a shape. So let's go with a rectangle tool. Uh, we're going to come in here and uh, go into node editing mode. Let's get rid of this vector for a moment. Uh, let's spike this up some. Wham. All right, so let's go into node editing and I'm going to insert a point insert a point here and I'm going to pull this point in ever so slightly and smooth it out okay um, I, I do like a, instead of a straight edge here I like a little bit of a lip uh, and also I'm gonna kind of round this off to that extent there so it kind of creates that little bit of a lip right there and uh, let's take this curve uh, to its extreme go back into node editing and let's pull this down and out and then this middle one here let's uh, create an arc and all I do all I want to do is a slight little cup give the illusion of it uh, you know uh, going in whatever the case may be let's give a little bit more of an extreme curve there all right and then now with my revolve tool um, <clears throat> this uh, will turn or rotate around a line uh, from the start point to the end point okay so now if I had this vector selected notice that it doesn't give me any option right it doesn't give me any option at all and because this is one vector remember when we're always working with a model uh, that bottom span in this case this would be the bottom of my rectangle so uh, in node editing I'm going to uh, delete this span okay and now uh, I have to have, I still, I don't, uh, that's kind of uh, technically wrong. Let's undo that delete. I want to cut the vector. Uh, let me go back into uh, node editing. And I'm going to cut, cut. Because I, I can, you know, I can revolve uh, around any line that I want. Um, and that should be cut. I believe it's cut. Let's see, is it cut? Cut. All right. Now, in this case, um, let me get out of node editing mode. In this case, I'm going to have a line here. Um, and I'm going to have my model. Now, why are you doing that, you son of a gun? Let's get rid of that. There we go. Um, <clears throat> I don't think the line plays a role in there because it's not selected, but you know, we're going to leave it there. All right. So now if I look at my 3D model, we've got this uh, goblet shape. Now, one of the things that uh, is going to happen because it's revolving that shape around to the other side. Let me see if I can get this to repixelate. Bear with me a second while it regenerates uh, you know it's creating this this dome and all but it's giving me this center point right because my my dome came up to the center so I want to make sure that that peak is not there uh, if I reset this I want to make sure that this peak is down to you know like if it was if it was going all the way across so if I if I came in here and mirrored this, uh, go into transform mode, close this tool. Hope I don't go into black screen again. Uh, if I if I if I hold down my control shift 
and click H on my keyboard, right? That creates that shape that you just saw with that center dome and all. Well, I want this arc to go all the way across. So if I go into my draw arc tool and I snap from this point to this point and I, you know, whatever I want that, you know, dome or cup, you know, to be, okay? And uh, now I can come in with my scissor tool and trim this away. And then ultimately, of course, all of this gets trimmed away. Right, you know, that whole side. Now, this line does not, oops, let me go ahead and uh, cut that again. This line, that center line does not play a role uh, whatsoever. So, I'm gonna delete it. All right, so now that I have that, let's get out of uh, this mode here and go back into our rotate apply that and now don't you fight me don't make a liar out of me now I think it don't let me see here I don't think it don't let it regenerate That's right. Um, it uh, rotates from the start point to the end point. It's going to maintain the general shape, but this peak is higher than that, so it's not going to generate that. Um, but I may be able to. mm-hmm yeah anyhow um, so that's that tool now how do I use uh, my two rail sweeps I use my two rail sweeps Dennis mostly when I'm making fourth axis objects and stuff um, for my table legs I always start out with a rectangle uh, I'll draw it on the board for right now so you guys and girls can see it and um, I will Node editing, trying to remember what I'm doing here. Uh, delete that span. Oh, this is going to be a tapered cut. What's he doing? What's he doing? Extend tool. Trim. Node editing. Smooth this point. Turn this back into a straight line. Move this point, pull this back into what it was, turn this back into a straight line. I'll put a radius on that. Uh, smooth. Oop, what I do there? That was not what I wanted to do. So you can see you can't do undercuts. Oh, wrong one selected. Come on now. Uh, 
Uh, all right, fillet tool. Um, Oh. What is it you're making, Laney? I have no idea. All right. Straight line. One. Now, your two-rail sweep does not have to be on the top of the bottom of the board. It could be anywhere on the board. It could be depending on what it is that you're doing. Uh, this component might take up, you know, the might might you know might be the full object. It might be the uh, the top part of your table leg, and you're drawing your two your rails uh, along that table leg. This could be a, just a certain part of the component of the leg, you know, depending on this overall. Now, this is a 10 by 10 project here, but. Uh, you draw your rails, whether they're vertically or horizontally, uh, the, in the direction that you want to sweep. In this case, I want to sweep, you know, but this part, um, between these two rails. All right, two rail sweep. And I uh, probably should have went vertical instead of horizontal, but um, we'll uh, did I get black screened on y'all? No, nope, y'all are good. Okay, so this. In a long linear length, um, if I was doing, I would I would set it up for a tiling job. I would set it up for you know something, and this would be a piece of uh, base molding um, that uh, you know, or even a piece of chair rail molding or something, or uh, uh, under cabinet molding or whatever the case may be. So. Uh, my two rail sweeps, uh, Dennis, uh, to answer your question, they typically have to do with something if I'm doing it on a fourth axis or if I'm uh, creating uh, parts uh, for my lamp base legs, uh, trim molding for boxes or projects or, uh, you know, the house, whatever the case may be. And uh, in this case, this would be a piece of, you know, uh, it's more, I can't really say base molding. It's more of a, you know, a bottom trim molding for a, uh, a box or what have you. And whether you have the high side up, low side down, whatever you want, you know, but that's what I use the two rail sweep for. Um, yes, wine bottles and glasses are, uh, where I use them a lot. Uh, absolutely. Um, and also, you know, that, that, that revolving where I made that little goblet, you can use that to make your wine glass. Uh, you can use that to make your wine bottle. You can use that to, you know, uh, all kinds of things. Uh, in this case, um, you know, um, this is a, this is a piece of, and I, I, when I say base trim, I'm calling it wrong. It's not base trim. Base trim regards, re, 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 um, re, uh, usually refers to floor trim and stuff um uh this is a this would be like a uh, lower trim or casing or something around uh the uh, skirt of my table or uh, a table or um a uh profile for uh, uh the side of a you know a box or lower trim uh, encasing and stuff like that so you know just a general it's one of my you know uh, it looks funky when you draw it out but it's just a general it's just, it's just a general piece of trim that's all it was all right ladies and gentlemen uh, I want to thank you for joining me tonight hopefully some of this was we got way off track 
about uh, model resolution and all that stuff uh, is where we started at, you know, with some tips and advice on, you know, carving and generating your model. I wanted it to be about that. And we ended up into uh, um, somehow uh, talking about uh, two rail sweeps and uh, rest machining and all that stuff. So for you ladies and gentlemen that have uh, Vetric V-Carve Desktop and Pro, um, the only way you'd be able to do something like this uh, would be your molding tool path. You can still make this piece of trim just like that, you know, or any piece of trim, but it's your molding tool path. Uh, ladies and gentlemen that have a spire, you would be using your molding toolpath as well, or you could use your two rail sweep, your one rail sweep, your revolve tools, anything like that, your shape tool. <laughs> David. Oh, David, 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 David. David uh, Kinsey, um, Laney from Monday. I don't think you uh, told us how you get Laney out of the first initial W. <clears throat> well, my middle initial was D, right? D. Delaney. D-E-L-A-N-E-Y. Delaney. D -E -L -A -N -E -Y, Delaney. Right? My first name is Walter. Uh, my mama don't even call me Walter. Uh, nobody ever calls me Walter. Uh, if you call me Walter, then uh, we are no friends. Uh, you are a uh, you're a bill collector. You're a, you're 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 a salesman trying to sell me something. You're you're not a friend of mine. Um, you're a business associate that uh, are a, a, a business associate that I work with that don't really uh, I wouldn't hang out with you after work kind of thing. So uh, all my friends call me Laney. <laughs> <laughs> all right uh but walter walter delaney that's where you get that from all right ladies and gentlemen i want y'all to have a uh wonderful evening and um until next time i'll see you soon